Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? This is Revelux, and I am back with another guide. It's been a hot second since I've done one of these, so I figured it was right about time to make this happen. Uh, so the last few months, I've been spending a lot of time in Black Rose Prison trying to get uh, various Unchained titles for myself and some friends of mine. Uh, Unchained means uh, completing Black Rose Prison in under 40 minutes with no deaths and not using any sigils. Uh, so as you can, I'm sure, understand, I have spent many, many, many hours in there just really refining strategies and figuring out how to uh, get this Unchained title. Uh, so as a result, I have a lot of experience in there I want to share. Now, the main reason I want to share this is uh, when I posted uh, my Unchained boss mashups, one of the biggest responses I got was, well, you make it look really, really easy in the video, right? But when I actually go in there and try to do it, it's 10 times harder. I don't get it. Explain to me how it's done. I want more than just a boss mashup. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to explain exactly uh, the strategies that we used and how we did it. So that way uh, you're able to go in and do the exact same thing. Uh, so before we get started, a couple different things. Number one, if you are looking for something cool to watch and you want to just see the Unchained clear, I recommend checking out the boss mashups in the description below. This is going to be a relatively dry video as I'm going to be using visual aids and uh, my most recent clear uh, as an example of what to do and just doing a lot of talking through it. So bear with me. Um, it will be valuable advice, I promise. At number two, there are various different strategies and ways to do this. I'm not saying mine is the end-all be-all. However, mine does work really, really, really well, and I've gotten many unchanged using this strategy. So for me personally, this is the way I do it, um, and that's what I'm sharing today. So let's jump right into it. All right, here we go. So this is the video of my most recent uh, Unchained Clear. I, this was on a Mag DK. Um, with a bunch of my friends, Scarlet, uh, Unicorn, and I'm a slow learner uh, as the tank. Um, so to provide you some background on BRP, BRP is split into five different arenas, all right? And each arena has its own ad pulls and boss waves, okay? So specifically, there are five arenas. Now each arena has multiple waves, and then each wave has multiple spawns that occur within the wave. So I'm going to be going step by step, talking through every single spawn that occurs within every single wave. Originally, I was going to put this all together in one big video, arenas one through five. Uh, but as I'm working on this, it's actually taking a lot of time to compile the different arenas. So I'm going to split them into separate arena videos. Uh, hopefully that way all this information is a little bit more digestible uh, for you as the viewer as well. So let's jump right into it. Uh, as you can see, Right here, I have a lovely PowerPoint illustration that I've made for this to try to help explain and visualize what we're doing. Uh, as you can see here, we have the blue tank icon representing the tank. You have the green uh, plus icon representing the healer and the two swords representing, you guessed it, the DPS. All right, and then finally, we do have the red uh, group here. Um, bubble that's just really trying to illustrate uh, where where the tank should be grouping everything uh, this video is primarily dps focused but i am going to be including grouping locations and and tips for the healer and tank as well even though it's not going to be entirely focused on them so this should be good for uh, for everyone in there so jumping right into it arena one wave one this is the first spawn of wave one you'll notice that we're just grouping at dead center uh with the two dps together the healer right there um again a large part of getting through black rose prison with no deaths or even with deaths uh is just to kill stuff as quickly as possible the faster stuff dies the less heavy attacks the less mechanics you're gonna have to deal with all right so part of the way that it quote unquote looks easy is by super fast hard burns now on that note um you have short delays in between each spawn right and in those short delays you should be using that time to pre-buff your dps to drop stuff on the ground like elemental wall or unstable wall excuse me and skills like that that you can lay down ahead of time so that way when the ads are pulled in they're already getting hit by it and you can focus on your spammable dps okay so wave one spawn one at the center let's watch it actually happen uh, as you can see here, we are running in, um, 
and we are dropping a lot of pre-buffs. I'm using my uh, channeled acceleration, that sort of thing, getting a lot of pre-buffs on the ground prior to the ads actually arriving. You see all the ads are beautifully grouped together at the center. Thankfully, our tank is a warden, so he has the lovely gate um, that he can use. And just like that, wave one, spawn one, already completely destroyed. Again, that super high pre-buff DPS, just really making it easy. Okay, we are moving on to the second spawn of wave one. The second spawn of wave one, we are completely changing position. The reason for this is there is a cleaver spawning right down here at the red circle at the bottom. Okay, that cleaver has the highest health of uh, all the targets this wave so you want to focus it to get it down because of that big health pool now notice here that you have the two dps and the healer and the tank all grouped very close to the wall you want to make sure you're group, uh, glu excuse me grouped close to the entrance because you're going to have archers and stuff spawning way out here okay and the tank's not going to be able to pull them in when they're out here right so if you're grouped next to the wall the archers aren't going to be able to hit you at first either so they're going to run in when they run in closer, it makes it a lot easier on the tank to be able to pull those in. So please, please, please make sure you're grouped up against the wall to make it easier on the tank. Your tank will thank you. All right, let's watch it actually happen live. So here we go. The cleaver is spawning. You'll notice that we're priority targeting the cleaver um, just because it does have, again, the biggest health pool. We're not using ults at this point, though. Just this fast hard burn on everything. Again, we're staying pretty close to the wall there couple ads that didn't get pulled in all the way um so we're just cleaning that up all right second spawn complete now we're on to the third spawn now on the third spawn we're grouping at the exact same spot as the second spawn the biggest difference here is we have a priority targeted dread knight okay dread knight is going to spawn at that entrance now dread knights are going to be your biggest ad target throughout arena one waves okay they have the most health uh and they hit pretty hard on the tank so the tank needs to be ready to deal with that extra incoming damage and dps uh, and healer, you guys should prioritize your ults for hard nukes on these Dread Knights to get them down because they're beefy boys. All right, so here we go. The Dread Knight is spawning, and you'll notice that there are being multiple ults dropped on it. Uh, and meanwhile, the tank is focusing on pulling everything else in, of course, as well. Okay, now you notice the archer over there uh, didn't get pulled in in time. Um, so we're just cleaning up the trash, cleaning up these last couple ad spawns. Uh, we probably could have done a little bit better stacking against the wall there to make it easier on the tank. Okay, good deal. So we've made it all the way through wave one. We're moving on to wave two. Now at the start of wave two, uh, incinerator is going to spawn right where this red thing is. Um, if you don't know what incinerator is, basically it's a mage uh, specific to arena one that will raise... Uh, his staff or whatever above his head and it will cause a big flaming circle above his head okay and that can be interrupted if you do not interrupt that when that occurs uh, it's going to send damage to every single person in the team and it's going to hit really really hard okay so you're probably going to wipe or at least a couple group members are going to die if you do not interrupt this on time make that your number one priority to get those interrupts off all right so we're stacking on the incinerator um, and just burning Wave two, uh, group one, here we go. So as you see here, we're headed into wave two. We're all headed to that area where the mage is gonna spawn. We're dropping our pre-buffs on the ground, getting some damage out. There is the incinerator, just doing a hard nuke on it to try to get it down. If you burn it fast enough, it won't even have time to get off its fire. So you look at that, we burned it so fast it didn't have its fire off. So even better. Again, a high DPS really reduces the amount of mechanics you have to deal with. Okay. Um, just finishing off some ads that didn't get pulled in all the way. That's why we moved location. Ideally, they all get pulled in at that spot where the incinerator's at. So that was wave, uh, excuse me, um, spawn one of wave two. We're moving on to spawn two of wave two. Spawn two of wave two, we're switching position back to the center. There's going to be no priority targets this wave. It's just very simple, lots of ads, quick, hard burn. Uh, Pre-buffing the ground. Here they come. Beautiful, beautiful grouping done by the tank here. And because of that grouping, we're able to nuke these things down so fast. There it is, already through that spawn. Now we're on to the final spawn of Wave 2. The final spawn of Wave 2, there is a Dread Knight, again, showing up at the entrance. So we're grouping at the entrance just like before, trying to stay pretty close to the wall to make it easier on the tank. Again, hard nuking the Dread Knight, dropping ults. Here we go. With all these lovely ults being dropped to just yeet this thing down. Ads are being pulled in. It's that hard, hard, hard nuke.
Beautiful. Um, okay, so one didn't get pulled in, uh, an archer there. And we're just finishing it off. Okay, and bam, there we go. We are through wave two completely. Moving on to wave three. This is the first spawn of wave three. For the first spawn of wave three, you're going to stay right there at the entrance that you were just at. Okay, so we're staying at the entrance because a cleaver is going to show up. Again, we don't use ults for cleavers, but we do just like to have a decently hard burn on them since they are uh, higher health than the other ads that are going to be pulled in. So here we are, just nuking everything very quickly. All right, good deal. That was the first spawn of wave three. Now we're moving on to the second spawn of wave three. This is where it gets a little bit interesting, all right? Now you'll notice here that we have two different positionings, okay? So it's important to pay attention to this part. We have the two uh, DPS and the healer up here at the top right door, all right? Top right door. Now the tank is still down here at the bottom right door. That's because an incinerator is going to spawn right here at the top right door, and the healer and the DPS need to nuke that incinerator down as quickly as possible. And as soon as they nuke that incinerator down, they need to move to the tank stack, all right? The tank is going to be pulling in multiple adds. Two of those adds are going to be archers. Those two archers are extremely important. When you kill the two archers, the next uh, the next ad wave begins, or the next spawn begins. So you want to kill those two archers as quickly as possible so you can move on to the next wave, or the next spawn, excuse me. So let's actually watch it happen. So here we are moving to where that incinerator is going to spawn. The incinerator is up. We're doing a new con. Try to get it down. The incinerator moved out a little bit. It was a little bit bad RNG there. Um, so notice here the incinerator is probably going to get a cast off. See that swirly thing? All right, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now there we burned it fast enough. But um, normally you'd want to just make sure you interrupt it so it doesn't get uh, – doesn't – isn't able to hurt the group. Now um, – what you just saw there was there was two archers. We just burned those two archers down really, really fast, fast and the next ad wave started. I'll just skip back a little bit here. Um, so we just finished burning the two archers. Now we're on to the wave, or sorry, the spawn three of ad wave three. Spawn three, we're all going to group at that location that the tank pulled those two archers to uh, last last spawn. Uh, we're all going to be grouped here. There is going to be an incinerator that spawns that incinerator's top priority. There's also going to be a dread knight coming in. Once again, those dread knight are beefy boys. You want to hard nuke on them and focus on the incinerator to make sure those interrupts are gotten. Let's watch it happen. All right, here we go. You have the incinerator up against the wall. Dread Knight just came in from the right. We're dropping those ults, doing this hard nuke, just trying to get everything down. Um, there you have it. Just nuking everything down. Managed to get the incinerator down before he casted once again. Uh, and we are completely through wave three. Moving on to wave four, the first ad wave is going to be easy peasy. You're just going to group everything at the center and do a hard nuke. No priority targets once again. Okay, dropping that pre-buff, getting that, getting that huge pre-buffable damage on the ground. And you have two cleavers. You have a cleaver coming in from the left and a cleaver coming in from the right, and they're going to meet at the middle. Uh, your only job really is just to, um, to burn the adds as quickly as possible to get them down so you can transition to the next ad wave. All right, so there you have it. We just got those uh, cleavers down at the center. Now we're going to move on to the second spawn of wave four. The second spawn of wave four, it gets interesting again. On the second spawn of wave four, you have a cleaver spawning here at the back right gate, the back right door. You have that cleaver, or the, sorry, the incinerator spawning. So the two DPS and the healer need to be work together to get that incinerator on the back right, uh, back right gate uh, down as quickly as possible, all right? Now, as soon as you get that incinerator down, you're, the group needs to move over to here. Now, the tank's been over here the whole time, grouping all the other ads right here. There's another incinerator that's hope happening in this group, so the tank's number one priority is to keep an eye on that incinerator and to interrupt it if it starts casting, so that way the two DPS and healer can take care of the incinerator on the other side. So again, DPS healer nuke that incinerator. They move over to the tank stack and kill everything the tank has grouped together. Uh, again, keeping an eye on that incinerator. Let's watch it happen. So here we go. We're on that back right door. The incinerator is spawning. We're working together to get that thing down as quickly as possible. 
There it is. It's down. All right. We're headed over to the tank stack on the other uh, far left back doorway. There's an incinerator right there that the tank's keeping an eye on to make sure it doesn't get its cast off. And we're just doing a hard nuke on all these ads that the tank has pulled in for us. There you have it. The incinerator is down. And we are moving on to the final ad wave. Now the final ad, uh, final uh, spawn, excuse me, of wave four. The final spawn of wave four, we're going to move back to the center and group everything at the center. So here we go. Here it happens. All right. So you have a Dread Knight on the left and a Dread Knight on the right moving into the center. They're going to meet at the center. All right. And then we're going to do a hard nuke on them. Now, it's super important to remember there are two Dread Knights this time, but you do not want to drop ults. You're about to go into the boss wave, so you need to keep your uh, you need to keep your ult built up for the boss. So it's going to take a hot second to kill these because you're doing it without ults again. Just uh, burn them as quickly as possible. All right, here we go. We just made it through wave four. There's only one wave left uh, before we are complete with Arena One. We're moving on to the boss wave. All right, boss wave. So, uh, thing to note, look at look at the positioning we have here. We have a DPS on the left, a DPS on the right. We have the healer at the back, uh, or healer at south, excuse me, tank at north. Uh, it's super important that you pre-arrange your positions going into the boss wave because this boss has a mechanic called uh, meteor, and the meteor is this big AOA circle around your body, all right? And it's stackable damage. That means that if you as DPS 1 and your buddy as DPS 2 both stand on top of each other, you're going to have two meteors hitting each of you and you both are going to die. So it's super, super important that when the meteors happen, you do not stack meteors. So getting that positioning nailed down as you go into that boss wave is important so that doesn't happen. Uh, you notice here you have the arrows, so it, when the meteor happens, you can just run backwards. Uh, if everyone's in position, like I have shown right here, if you all run backwards, there's no chance that you'll overlap each other so it's nice and clean and easy, all right? Um, important thing to note about this boss, this boss gets way, way easier the higher your DPS is, uh, the harder the nuke is. So you're going to notice in the video I'm about to play, we burn it super fast um, just to make things a lot easier. I think we only end up with like one or two meteor phases. Let's take a look. All right, so here the boss is coming in. It's super important to get that pre-buffable damage down for a super hard burn. Uh, we're going to drop our ults here right as the boss spawns. There's the ult, and we're just doing a hard nuke. Once again, we're paying a little bit of attention to our positioning here. And that boss is just melting, boys. Right, here's the meteor. Notice that we're all spread apart, so we're not overlapping meteors whatsoever. If we had overlapped there, we would have died. All right, we're in execute already, just nuking him down. And there you have it. The boss is dead. Now, um, as I already noted, if you look at the DPS counter, we had over 200k group DPS there, all right? That's how come the boss died that fast. Um, if the boss does not die that fast, as you can see on my screen, uh, when we killed him, he was summoning a second meteor. So if the boss does not die that fast, you're going to get that second meteor. You're going to have to spread apart again. Uh, you're also going to get a fiery wagon wheel. The boss spawns at the center location um, after this meteor and sends out this flaming wagon wheel that rotates. Uh, if that happens because your DPS is a little lower, no worries whatsoever. It's perfectly normal to get that wagon wheel. Uh, basically, all you have to do is just move with the wheel. Don't stand in the fire. Just move with the wheel and continue DPSing the boss. It's very, very easy. Uh, you just need to stay focused and stay calm when that happens. Now, one other thing to note, after the wagon wheel, um, if your burn is just very slow, then you could get another meteor after the wagon wheel as well. So after the wagon wheel completes, you need to make sure you all get right back into the position. So that way when the next meteor happens, y'all are ready to move back out and not stack on each other. This boss is very easy. He's um, definitely the easiest boss in the arena. Uh, so as long as you just handle the meteors and a potential wagon wheel correctly, um, you'll be able to clear it no matter what your DPS is. More DPS just speeds up the fight is all. Uh, but that is Arena 1. This is uh, the entire instruction guide for Arena 1. So you follow these strategies and uh, you'll be able to make it through easy peasy. I really, really hope that helped you guys. As a reminder, I'm going to be doing um, 
more instruction videos on the subsequent arenas, and I'll try to get those out soon to you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching and spending a part of your day with me, and I really hope that this has been able to help y'all.